I wanted to say I'm so proud to be able to be here, but also to start working with us all to look at what that vision for volunteering will be in 2032. As Ade said, I am the Head of Volunteering Development at Macmillan, but I'm also here in this capacity as a volunteer myself, as the Chair of the Association of Volunteer Managers. I also volunteer as a, uh, at a ho local hospice. I've been volunteering with Samaritan, the helpline um, supporting people abused in childhood, and done various uh, other trustee roles. So I've, I've got a lot of volunteering, and I absolutely want to recognize the power of that in, in where we want to be. It's difficult to think about where we might be in 10 years' time. Who knew 10 years ago that we'd have gone through what we have been through? But I am confident that in 10 years, volunteering is still going to be an important part of my life. Empowering people to make a difference in their local communities and bring about change using their own skills and assets is why I'm excited and passionate about volunteering and volunteer management. Like all of us here today, and like Ade has just exemplified, I care deeply about volunteering and the really positive impact that it can have. Volunteers strengthen communities, whether it's a local geographic community, a religious or cultural community, or a community of those with shared interests. Great things happen when people get to know each other and work together on the things that they care about and that really matter to them. As I'm sure you all know, volunteering is personally beneficial to every individual who volunteers. That personal benefit should be celebrated as much as the wider good for society. Without volunteering, there are some fantastic people I would never have met, some powerful experiences I would never have had, and really lots of valuable skills and life lessons that I would never have learned. And I know that many of us here today, and indeed millions across the country, feel the same. It's no secret that it's been a challenging couple of years, but one thing that it has demonstrated is that volunteering and community engagement is and remains a universally strong spirit. People, without being asked to step in, came forward to give their time and share their skills, to provide practical assistance, comfort and support, ultimately creating a sense of resilience and strength. The power of volunteering, people giving their time to others, whatever it might be called, some people call it social action, some people call it mutual aid, neighborliness, whatever name describes that action has been central to enabling support during the pandemic and quite rightly has been widely celebrated. But where do we go next? In the new vision for volunteering, we make five statements about what volunteering needs to look like and how those who volunteer need to feel about that activity or role by 2032 or sooner. Number one, we want a future in which volunteering is further ingrained in the collective psyche. It's part of everybody's daily life and in which it's always easy to find ways to make a difference. Number two, we want a future where the power of volunteers and communities is recognised and supported, allowing everyone to engage within their community, identify what matters to them and build the future they want to see. Number three, we want volunteering to be as accessible and welcoming to everybody, everywhere, so that the benefits of volunteering are equally distributed. Number four, we want a future where collaboration is a natural, fluid, flexible and spontaneous part of volunteering. Where working together across organisations is actively encouraged and barriers to that are tackled. And finally, we want experimentation, learning and flexibility to be a natural, constant part of volunteering, not just a temporary bolt-on when there's a crisis or COVID. The vision for volunteering is very deliberately not a finalised plan suggesting how we achieve those things. Instead, this is the start of the conversation 
the next chapter about what is needed to create that diverse, innovative, ambitious, and person-centered future by 2032. We'd love you to be part of that conversation, to hear your voice in that continuing dialogue. So please go to our website, www.visionforvolunteering.org.uk, and sign up to hear more. Or visit our stand at D14 in the expo today. And of course, please do let us know what you think using the hashtag Vision for Volunteering. It might not always be easy to be optimistic, especially with everything going on in the world at the moment. But what I am optimistic about is that volunteers will continue to make the world a better place. And optimistic that by 2032, we will have made those five ambitions a reality, all of us. So I hope you have a great day at the Expo and that volunteering is a positive part of your life today, in 2032, and beyond. I'm now going to hand over to Gracie, from an I Will ambassador, who will be leading us through some thoughts about what the vision means really. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Oops. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Gracie Chick, I'm 18 and I'm an ambassador for the I Will Movement. Uh, ever since I was asked to give this presentation, I've been thinking about what volunteering actually means. I've spent my whole life committed to creating change, but I've never really seen it as volunteering. Um, I've always just seen it as a social responsibility, as an, atti as an attitude, not as an act. And I know many others, probably some of you in this room, will see it the same way. This presentation is all about redefining the world that we want to live in um, and the part we play in changing it. Um, and I wonder whether volunteer, volunteering has to change and evolve as well to fit this changing world. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so the world is full of movement and we all want to be on the right side of history. But it's so easy to get swept along in a direction we don't really want to go in. How do we move forward when everything so often seems to be against us? Well, if we really want to build a movement, first we have to know what we're moving away from and then what we're moving towards. I know from personal experience that the way forward can seem really uncertain. I also know it's something you can only discover through asking questions, lots of questions. So I'm going to ask you a few right now, and I hope it makes things seem a little bit clearer. Um, some might be a bit challenging, some might seem really obvious, but just answer in your own head as we go along. Cool. If you had a vulnerable neighbor, would you A, see them um, as someone else's problem, or see that you had a responsibility towards them? Um, are they just another individual who has nothing to do with you, or are they a part of your community? Are they solely the responsibility of their own family who might not be there for them? Or do the people who live right next door have some responsibility too? If you had extra money besides what you needed, would you A, spend it on yourself, or B, spend it on creating a better world? Would you put it aside for a rainy day or help someone whose rainy day is here right now? Would you invest it in profit or would you invest it in people? Uh, would you think only of yourself or the part you play in a much, much bigger picture? If your friend is having a bad day, would you rather they A, keep it to themselves, or B, share how they're feeling with you? Would you rather they bottled it up so as not to be a burden, or trusted you enough to be vulnerable? Would you rather not know so you wouldn't have to do anything, or know so that you have the opportunity to support them if you could? Would you rather A, live comfortably, ignoring the climate crisis that we face, or B, contribute to saving our planet, even if it meant making personal sacrifices? Would you rather live for the convenience and ease of the present moment, or act for the sake of the future of humanity and generations to come? Do you believe that the responsibility to make your community a better place is A, the government's, or B, yours? Are the only people with any power elected officials? 
Or do we as ordinary people have the power to create changes too? Do you believe we should put our energy into campaigning for someone else to solve all our problems or take matters into our own hands sometimes? If you had your own home, would you A, leave your spare room empty or B, invite a refugee to come live with you? Would you be fearful of the unknown or see the value in sharing your home with someone who has had to flee theirs? Would you rather just have an empty room gathering dust or potentially another member of the family with their own culture and skills to share? If you saw someone being bullied or excluded, would you A, turn a blind eye just to fit in, which is easily done sometimes, or B, stand up for that person, even if it meant losing your own popularity? Would you cross the street, believing it's nothing to do with you, or make a stand against injustice, even if there is a personal cost? Would you do what is best for you in that moment or what is right? If your neighbour offers you money for helping them with a few odd jobs, do you A, take it, or B, say, no thank you? Is it a perfectly good chance to make some money or just an opportunity to build a relationship with that person? Does everything in life have to be a transaction or does that take the beauty and joy and humanity out of our existence? You get to a point in your life where you need a bit of security, we all do. Would you rather feel financially and materially secure or be feel secure because you're surrounded by a community who you know have got your back no matter what? Would you rather spend your whole life accumulating material wealth or wealth that comes from human connection and relationships? Okay, so this is a real life story. My dad was once working at the flat of a kid who got mixed up in some pretty bad trouble with gang violence. Um, and he was having to move out, so my dad went around to clean his flat, and he found this bit of paper just screwed up on the floor, and it said, uh, I want to be a good boy, but there's no one there to help me. Do you believe this is A, normal and acceptable in a modern society, or B, a crime against humanity? Would you rather put all your energy into A, getting lots of followers on social media, or B, building real meaningful relationships with the people around you? Would you rather fit into the latest trending aesthetic, or be accepted as a 100% authentic version of yourself? Would you rather spend all your time making the trending videos for TikTok or be an integral part of your community? Do you judge others based on A, their outward appearance, or B, who they are as a human being? Do you make a judgment before or after listening to their story? Do you remain ignorant or make an effort to understand them, even if they are very, very different than you? Do you judge them on the circumstances they have absolutely no control over or the person they try hard to be? Do you believe that a young person should be defined by A, their ability to do well in an exam, or B, their true potential? What do you believe is more important, an A grade in English and maths, or creativity and intelligence in all these other areas of life? Is it more important to get just good exam results or to be a good person? Do you believe that you have A, less, or B, more, when you share what you have with others? Do you believe that sharing decreases what we have or increases it? Do you feel like sharing is a hardship and a sacrifice or an investment in a better future for us all? Do you believe sharing is simply a nice thing to do or a powerful tool which really can change our world? Do you believe that A, we should all just have to conform to the system we live in, or B, that we all have a human right to live by our values and try to make this world a better place for everyone? Should we all just accept the world as it is, or do we have a right to help build a new one? Do you believe it should be made impossible to even have values, or that our rights to live by our values should be protected? Thank you so much, everyone, for participating in this and answering these questions. Answer A represents the world we live in now, a world where we see ourselves as individuals, and we only care about the issues that directly affect us. A world where we see money and material things as the very height of success. It's a world moving rapidly towards destruction. A world maintained by our actions and sometimes our complacency. Is this the world we really want to live in? Answer B represents the world as it could be. A world held together by collective power. Where we see that we're all connected and all have a responsibility for each other. A world where your success is based on who you are as a human being. A world which we could start moving towards tomorrow. There is no planet B, but there is still time for option B.
The only way we can build this movement is through a shift in what we value, moving away from valuing and placing all of our emphasis on what you earn and own, and towards valuing human connection and sharing. This isn't about redistributing wealth and power, this is about completely redefining it. As young people, we have to stop and choose which of these worlds we want to live in, and then we have to build it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope that's given you something to reflect on, and I'm now going to hand you over to my amazing co-ambassador, George. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we learn every day, don't we? And I learn, perhaps, that no one can follow Gracie, uh, but, we, but, but we, will all, we will all try. The questions that Gracie asks demonstrate something. They demonstrate we've all got a power over the decisions we make in our own personal, social lives and our communities. And if you don't mind, this is the part of the presentation where audience participation starts. So forgive the irony of me being one of the few wheelchair users in the room, but I would love you to stand up if you could. And if there's anybody in the room that if there's anybody in the room that struggles to stand up, you can just wave your hand in answer to these questions. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and honesty is leadership. So please do, please do answer them as honestly as you can, but there is absolutely no pressure. For full disclosure, I fit into one of these categories here today, but I'm not going to tell you which one. So, the first question, and I'd like you to sit down if the answer is yes. Have you ever spent time in prison? As far as I can see, very few people have started to sit down. The second question, ladies and gentlemen, is do you consider yourself an unpaid carer? A number of people I can see have sat down. The third question, were you or have you ever been excluded from school? There's, la there's laughing and rumbling, so, but, but I, can't, I can still see a lot of people standing. Have you ever experienced homelessness? I can see a number of people have sat down, but the majority of the room is still standing. The, penult the penultimate We've got three more questions left, ladies and gentlemen. Are, are, are you currently living with more than one medical condition, long-term medical condition? A lot of the room is still standing. Have you ever had reason to use a food bank? A lot of the room is still standing. And the last question, the last important question. Have you, ever be, have you ever been stopped and searched by the police? I can see a lot of people have started to sit down, but the room is still mostly standing. Why? have I asked you these questions? Because, as Gracie demonstrated, we all have a power over our decisions in our personal, professional, and social lives. We all have a power 
over who volunteers with us and is given the opportunity to shape their lives. We all have an opportunity to demonstrate what an equitable and equal society looks like and who participates in the activities and ensuring that everybody we, we, we work with has something that they're passionate about and believes in. You can all sit down now. As we are building towards a strategy and launching a strategy, a vision for volunteering for the next 10 years, we have to ask ourselves, what really matters and who do we want to hear from and what priorities we set for ourselves and our communities. Leadership, honesty matters. And I simply, in a volunteering context, want to leave you with this quote, if I may. A white college student from a private school goes into a poor neighborhood and volunteers for hours a week, and that's considered exemplary. Whereas a poor kid who lives in the community and takes care of all the kids in his neighborhood four hours every day is not seen as a volunteer. There is no single issue issue. The personal is the professional. And if we're all honest with ourselves and we all care about the people that we work with and the future of our communities, we will answer honestly and act honestly over the next 10 years. I demonstrate with Gracie and all of the team that we have here from I Will that there are many young people wanting to take this baton on and who want to be listened to. Let's all collectively have the conversation and enjoy doing so. And with that, I do want to hand you over, if I may, to my dear friend, Emma Jane. Thank you very much, George. Well done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, George. My name's Emma Jane, and I'm also one of the IOL ambassadors here today. George and I have been working on part of this strategy, which we're very excited to bring, working on the young people leading change and making change today. So I'd like to reflect on the quote that George just left us with about what we value, what we are taught to value, what we perceive as value. When we think about volunteering and social action, how we interact with others and what those actions mean. And something I think a lot of you will have come here today thinking is, do you know, I think this is really exciting, but I probably know what they're going to say. I know what I'm expecting to hear. I know what volunteering and social action is. It's really positive to be around a community of people who feel the same way as me. Perhaps have had different experiences to me, but to be in that space where we're all committed to doing the same thing. And uh, I'm here to tell you today that that's wrong. <laughs> I'm hoping that today you're going to be around lots of people who are going to tell you lots of different things and telling you that we don't really know what volunteering is because it means a different thing to each person, that social action is very personal and individual. And also that I'm not here right now to tell you anything new because I'm going to ask you to reflect with me for one moment because George has just asked you to bring your whole self to the space, which is a very brave thing to do, and that's something I'd like to invite you to do, just for a moment, to, to sit there for a moment and think, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be in this room. I'm good at what I do, whatever it is. I don't even know I'm doing it sometimes, but I know from how I feel and from how the people talk about it, I know that I'm good at what I do. And I know that I'm really bad at talking about it. I, it's really uncomfortable to, to big yourself up, to say, hey, I'm really good at this thing sometimes. We're much more comfortable with talking about our experiences, perhaps, our skills, things that we can put on a CV or say at a job interview or applying for a school captain or looking to help with the neighbours. So what I'd like you to do for just one moment, a quiet moment, is think, what am I really good at? Can you think of three things 
that you're really good at that aren't necessarily, you know, the first thing that trip off the tongue when you're asked to introduce yourself. The things that we don't talk about, the things like I'm perhaps a, a, a good listener, or I make really good brownies, or I'm, I don't know what the question is, but I'll probably have a really random answer and somehow we'll come back round to it. Just a moment to reflect. What am I honestly, what do I think I'm really good at? And I'm expecting that a lot of those things are not the things that we're taught to value, the things that are really easy to sell, really obviously round pegs, you know, round hole kind of thing. Another thing we need to do is we need, if we're going to have a new way of volunteering, we need to be experimental. We need to think of new things that we value and new ways to have those conversations and new relationships with each other. We say, hey, you remember what we said earlier? I'd like to pick up on that because actually if you hadn't told me that you were a professional dancer, I wouldn't be coming to you because I wouldn't know how. So I'd like you now, having, having just reflected for a minute or so, turn to someone around you that you haven't spoken to today and tell them one of your three things. Introduce yourself, say hello, I'm so-and-so and I'm really good at this and that's, that's okay because that's what we're here in this space to do. Just take a moment to do that now. Say hello and introduce yourself and say, I'm, hello, I'm so-and-so and I'm really good at this. Having, having had that chance to start that conversation, I am going to cut you short because I imagine that some of these conversations are going to continue all the way out in the hall and I'm not going to chase you all the way out with my mic because I'd love to break into the space up here and we've got some people running around with mics, I think. We'd like to share some of the things that, that we're really good at. So if, is there anybody who'd like to pop their hand up and share? And we've got a mic that'll run up and say, hey, the person next to me said they were really good at this, or hey, I'm so-and-so, and actually, I've never said before, but I'm really good at this. Let's go with Holly with a red cardigan coming up with a mic. Is somebody who'd like to share with Holly? Hello, my name is Pam, and I've been volunteering uh, with a military charity for uh, almost 16 years. In other words, we supply packs to injured service men and women uh, right across the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing part of your story. Stephen, with the microphone. Borodar, Chris Perkins, North Wales Police. I'm the Citizen Policing Team Leader for 200, 250 volunteers across North Wales. Um, I support them in what they do. They support me in my job. I couldn't do my job without them. It's a two-way street. Although I get paid to do my job, I am also a volunteer as well. I, I've been a scout leader, scout chairperson, and I'm really good at telling bad dad jokes. <laughs> Your bad bad jokes are very welcome here today. Thank you for sharing. Um, and one more from Holly, I think. Hi, my name's Brendan, but the um, person sat next to me is called Kiara, and she's brilliant at baking celebration cakes. You are very welcome here today, Kiara. Thank you. Excellent. And I think we'll take maybe one last one from so Stevens up at the back. Who have we got? Hello. Hello. Yo, my name is Sully, and I'm really good at football, and I'm really good looking. And uh, shout out to all my friends from GDA. Woo! He, he is good looking, by the way. Thank you for sharing today. You're really good at football and really good looking. Not that you'd say it yourself, I'm sure. I'm sure. So... Thank you all for taking that moment to think and sit maybe uncomfortably saying, I don't know what am I good at, what, what can I share with someone else, and for stepping forward and for starting that conversation. Now, I'm going to hand you back to George in a second. Just hold on, hold on to the thoughts of what you've got at. Hold on to those. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, this is the important moment when we reset ourselves for the next 10 years, are you ready? The priorities for the vision for volunteering for the next 10 years are these. Awareness and appreciation, equity and inclusion, experimentation, collaboration, 
and power. All five threads we have hoped to draw together in this presentation. And these are the priorities that we believe are, in collaboration with many different organizations and partners, the bedrocks and the foundations and the principles that will enable us to, to actively change our society for the better and do all the things that we're passionate and good at for the, for the good of our communities, individuals, and our families. The vision for volunteering is a very collaborative effort. We cannot achieve anything together. But if you put a stone in a lake, it ripples. If you have a conversation with the person next to you and there's a microphone nearby, a whole room can celebrate what you're good at and recognize what you're good at. And together, we can all, all change our society for the better. That's the hope. But it's, it is going to ha it's going to take every one of us in this room, every leader, and it is going to have to take us bringing on board a new generation, the people that aren't in this room, and those that we might be too scared to speak to, or indeed have for too long been easy to ignore. But we can do it. We can do it, bearing in mind these five principles. So, with that, and the future in mind, I want to hand back to Emma Jane. Thanks, I'm gonna grab your place for that as well. Thanks, George. Okay, so, thank you for giving us your attention for the last half an hour or so, would you believe it? And I'm sure that some of these conversations are going to, to echo for far longer than that, and the small, the small acorn will start growing something far bigger. So just before everyone starts thinking, oh, they're done, they're done, they're not done, they're not done with you at all, because we've talked about a vision. We've talked about where we're going, and we've, we're very stuck in the ways of, you know, how have we been getting there before? What have we got to do? And we say, detach yourself from that and think about today. Think about where you want to go. Think about where we want to go, who you want to be, who you want to be working with, who you're bringing with you on that journey, the spaces you're sharing, the work that you're doing. And I'd like you, just for a moment, just to close your eyes and imagine, imagine it's 2032. Imagine a world in which these five principles of our vision have come together. Imagine a new kind of relationship with volunteering, between yourself and volunteering, between others, between in the way that we work. And what I'd like you to do is, we've, we've got a postcard to the future, I'd like you to tell us. I'd like you to say, I will do these things on the back. And I'd like you to write a little letter, write a little letter to us about the future. In 10 years time, what is it that you want to see? So I'm bringing together, I've got the tough job, I've got to bring together Gracie's Petra Kitcher talk and all the decisions you want to make, everything that George has revealed to us today. And I'd like to say to you, bring yourself, bring everything you've thought and brought to this space. And tell us what you want to see. And come to the Vision for Volunteering stand. I think it's D13. I think it's D14. That's the one, D14. And I want to see you there with your postcard. You're going to drop it in the post box as a letter to the future. Because the vision is not about here what I say, what any one of us says. We're all great as individuals, but we're all only one. We'd like to see your vision for volunteering in 10 years' time. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Well done, my friend. Yeah,